All right, so now I'm going to install this uh, gearbox. Uh, this is the gearbox that shifts, has the lever on it that shifts between neutral, forward, and reverse for the lead screw. And it's very important if you own one of these to refrain from shifting. This is what I've been told to refrain from shifting this lever um, when it's running, while the lathe is running because you run the risk of damaging these Zamic gears that are underneath here. You've got this gear here, and then you've got this bevel gear on the top here, and then here's the other one, which uh, I actually didn't clean up yet, so I'm going to clean that one. Boy, certainly getting a lot of uh, use out of the parts cleaner. Anyways, that's the gear cleaned up. And then, uh, I mean, I just saw one of these gearboxes. Just this gearbox with these gears in it um, sold on eBay recently, and I don't remember exactly how much it brought, but it it, uh, it was a pretty penny that it brought. And I actually thought it was reasonable, considering whoever bought it may very well only need one of these gears and could probably turn right around and list the other gears if they didn't want to keep them as spares. And I guess that in later models, the gears, I think on the 10-inch lathes, the gears won't work because I think they beefed up the lead screw. So the diameter, I think, right here on the uh, later models is larger. So... Not positive on that. Uh, I don't see any part numbers on this gear actually. It's funny because most of this other stuff has part numbers right on it. I just want to show you the design of this. Uh, this actually rides right in here like this. And the lead screw goes right through there. And it's by design, it's got these holes right through. And what happens is as it's rotating, that hole will line up with this hole right here. That hole right there goes right through the body into the top there. You see that hole? And then there's another one right there. So those are your oiling holes. What happens is you put your oil down in there and the oil through gravity will want to come out right here and as this is rotating it will drip through that as this is rotating, it'll it'll loop this all, the outside of this, but at the same time, when it gets to this opening here, it'll let oil go down in and uh, lube the inside part that that is in contact with the lead screw. So I can't just put this in there loose like that, because then when I go to bolt it up, it's just going to fall out. Because what holds it in is actually what actually holds this up like this is the lead screw going through. And then looks like I'm missing. I've got to find one of the pieces that goes here which is responsible for shifting uh, between these two. So what you got is this is the driven part right here. There's going to be a gear that goes on this. That drives this and that turns through here. This That's going to be the one that's going to reverse the direction. So what happens is this is constantly driven in one direction by the motor and the gear train. And then what happens is you've got a like a clutch dog that goes in the middle here, and depending on the way this is shifted, it determines whether or not it's going to engage this one or this one to change direction. Oh, there it is. It's starting to worry. I thought I lost it. I guess I'll clean the lead screw. Okay. It's a little long, but uh, I just washed one end, flipped it in for end, and washed the other end, and it uh, cleaned up well. Ah, forgot. I really can't put this box on because this uh, gear is going to fall out unless I have the lead screw in. I really can't put the lead screw in until I address the problem down here with the bracket, and I'll show you that now. So way back when, when I was first moving this off of the workbench and putting it onto the ATV to move it here, I broke this bracket. Now, you know, I obviously broke it, but the reality is this bracket was notorious for breaking on these lathes. In fact, this particular bracket was designed to be weak, and it's supposed to be a sacrificial bracket. Now, back in the day when Atlas made these, I think that you could buy this replacement bracket for like 50 cents or some ridiculously small amount of money. And basically the idea was that what would happen is if you crash the lathe, uh, the carriage, you know, went somewhere where it wasn't supposed to or for whatever reason, uh, what would happen is the uh, force of the motor would continue to rotate the lead screw 
and then what would happen is by design this bracket would snap once this bracket snapped the rotating lead screw would basically unscrew itself from the drive end here and the idea was to save these gears from damage and of course the gears driving it you know the gear on here and all these gears out here all of this was going to be all of this was going to be saved by the sacrificial bracket here now the part number for this bracket is a 9-16 they do occasionally pop up on eBay I actually saw one that uh, I think was brand new old stock and I think they wanted about ninety dollars for it <laughs> and occasionally a used one a good used one will pop up on eBay for oh anywhere around fifty dollars some as high as maybe seventy dollars um, and they're commanding a premium because again uh, specialized to fit this particular lead screw on these nine inch early lathes in later models, when they beefed up the lead screw, they beefed up this bracket also. And in fact, there are actually some aftermarket or some homemade brackets floating around out there uh, where people have just figured out basically how easy it is to make something like this in the shop. And uh, so if you're looking for authenticity, like I was actually hoping to originally do on this lathe, then I'd want one of these 9-16s. problem is if I start paying you know 50 bucks for this uh, you know 70 for this handle um, going rate right on one of these handles is about 40 bucks and now all of a sudden I'm dumping I'm dumping a couple hundred bucks in parts in this lathe and there are as as rare as these are there's actually I think at last count two or three of these up on eBay so this one, when I finish, is actually going to be in better shape and in running condition. The other two on eBay are in non-running condition and, you know, are going to need some attention. But the point is, I, 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 sadly, this thing's worth more in parts than it's going to be as a complete running lathe. That's the irony of it. Uh, but I digress. So getting back, uh, my options are, A, repairing this bracket, which again, this is made out of that Zamic material, so I'm not sure how I would go about repairing that. Brazing it might be an option. I don't know. Um, I wonder if even silver solder would work on that. I don't know. JB Weld or an epoxy type product, maybe, but uh, you know that might, might not be a good idea either. Buying one, which right now for what they're asking for, I don't want to do that. Or fabricating one myself so that's another option I think for the time being I'm going to unscrew this one and take it off of here now there are two nuts you'll notice there's a locking nut and another nut on here and the reason why is because this nut does more than just hold this bracket on this nut also does the job of uh, being an adjustment for I believe the uh, backlash of the, uh, the lead screw so this is a specialized washer right here it's got a little pin that rides in that slot right there so I'm going to put that back on and put the screws back on and the other thing I just found out I could actually almost see it but I could definitely feel it when it screws these on this is a tapered thread on the end here so it gets tighter as you tighten it on uh, and then there's still of course the locking nut that goes on after it so you can see how small that is I believe the lead screw is 5 8 but then they turn down the uh, the end that actually goes through this bearing right here so it's pretty skinny And take this gear out of the box before I forget that it's in there and end up dropping the darn thing. Um, so I guess actually I can mount this box, I just can't leave this gear in there. Now on this end here, because I didn't take this arm off of the box when I was mounting it back on, I had to make sure that this bolt right here uh, was lined up so I could get it threaded into that hole right there because this is the bolt that's responsible for locking this whole assembly in position once you've figured out what position you want it in. So, in other words, this swivels. Ah, uh, a little stiff, but this swivels on on this arm right here. And then, depending on you know what you've decided to engage for gear combinations here, and I'll get into that when I uh, when I'm putting it all back together. I'll have to figure all that out. But this you know determines. Uh, which change gears uh, 
the feed rates, basically. Of course, in later lathes by Atlas, and then, of course, you know, uh, most good quality lathes uh, uh, that came later will have a uh, quick change gearbox, which is where all of this mashugana with the uh, gears is taken care of by just flipping a series of levers. The lighting from this side is not so great. But basically, this is that uh, bolt. And so what I'm going to want to do is this, of course, I've got this threaded into the bed of the lathe. And you don't want to thread this in so far that it actually starts to push this bracket uh, that way, because you could damage the bracket, obviously. But you want to get that in, and then you hold the head of this bolt, tighten this large nut against the bed. That's what keeps the bolt stationary. And then this nut here gets backed off, squeezes against this washer right here, and that's what actually does the clamping force to keep this this uh, bracket from moving once it's set. Okay, so I backed off this big nut. I tightened this bolt in just to the point where I could just start to detect a little bit of deflection of this bracket. Then, while holding the bolt from turning, I tightened this nut back down against the uh, bed of the lathe. And now that's locked in. And then now this nut I've left loose for now because I haven't uh, determined yet where I need to set set this setting. This is really stiff right here. I'm wondering if there's... If I should have taken this off and lubricated this. You know, I actually can move that, and I don't like... I don't want it to be too loose, so I'm going to leave it the way it is. Now, one of the other mistakes I made when I was disassembling this lathe is I really should have taken that chuck off um, before I uh, before I took the spindle assembly out. I'd like to give that uh, spindle assembly a bath in the parts washer, but I'm not crazy about the idea of dunking the whole chuck in there. Now, unlike on the Hendy, where there was a set screw to hold uh, hold that chuck from spinning freely, I think this chuck just unscrews and. Uh, it's not going to favor me by coming off easily, I kind of doubt. This is interesting here, somebody put a witness mark by the looks of it on the uh, on the chuck and the uh, chuck mounting plate so that uh, if they have separate the two, I guess they want to make sure they lined it up exactly that way again. Uh, so, you know, the problem is I've got nothing to hold on to here. Unless I can. Not going to take a big old pipe wrench and stick it on there anywhere because I'll end up damaging something for sure. These journals are all chew. You know what? Look at that. Somebody had a pipe wrench on that right there. You could see the teeth marks. Somebody was already grabbing that with a pipe wrench to turn it for some reason. <laughs> the amount of grease that was down inside these pulleys and is all over those belts, as a matter of fact. Uh, they're all saturated too. Uh, or I should say oil, oil and dirt. Um, it's just amazing to me this thing was actually even still running. You would think those belts would be wanting to uh, slip pretty badly. But I've got this pretty well cleaned up. Um, you can see this is the uh, pulley that slides back and forth. So that's going to be the one that must have to... Uh, somehow there must be a way to uh, lock that pulley to engage it. Not quite sure. This this basically this is uh this is called a compound drive and there's a way to actually do something with these pulleys so that you create a situation where uh it's almost like having back gears. So that'll run really slow. Well I gotta leave for a while so hopefully I'll have enough time when I come back later this evening to uh to work on this. Uh, I was wrong about this being able to slide back and forth. I forgot that <laughs> this is actually the uh, the area on the spindle that rides in the uh, the journal here. So that's not supposed to slide back and forth. That's supposed to freewheel by design. And that makes sense. There's actually an oil cap right here to lubricate that. This is where somebody's been putting the pipe wrench, probably to hold it while they unscrew or screw on the chuck. And this set screw right here allows you to uh, turn this 
big uh, spanner right here and that's going to adjust this thrust washer so this is more than likely how you adjust your uh, your end thrust is a I'm not getting that terminology correct end play in other words the amount that this thing can go back and forth like this